Hey everyone, it's Apex. I'm going to be showing you pretty much everything you need to know for elemental shamis in PvP. I will show you their playstyle, gyms, gearing, enchants, the best professions, macros. So let's go. So what about their playstyle? I'm going to try to illustrate this with some NPCs first, but I will go into an arena game and commentate sort of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So for most games, you're going to be putting down your totems first, and then once you get closer to the enemy or wherever you think you're going to be doing battle, then you'll reset the totems again. And then it's typically going to be doing your flame shot because it has a farther range than all your other spells, 45 yards. And then you're going to be just purging typically. Unless you want to get a little bit of damage going early, then maybe you do a lava burst. But the way to start is going to almost always be is you're sort of lining with the opponents and you're going to have to be ghost wolfing around some sort of pillar. If I'm fighting you and, and you want to, you try to fear me or, or you try to polymorph me and I just go around the corner. I just go around around the corner you're like this and you're just trying to purge 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 you're just purging and then maybe you're just applying more flame shocks if they're being real passive maybe you're grinding some cc or whatever it may be that is how the start of most games will go and a lot of your play is basically just keeping trimmer down grounding some spells spamming purge the whole game and flame shocks and getting some sort of setup so let's hop into a game. Hey guys, I'm going to try and do a live commentary for you. I am doing solo queue and I just randomized with the H-Pal and a Warriors. So one of the best Shaman comps I could have randomized into. And we'll see what we're against. This is a good map as well. We're against basically African, Tur African Turtle Cleave, except I believe that is an Arms Warrior. But it's still good, but it's not as good. So right now he's just starting off with a Reflect. I'm going to just be purging and flame shocking everything. Looks like my Warrior's really going in. So I'm going to just T-Storm them into a bad spot if the opportunity presents itself. Right now, it's just going to be hitting the alley. Okay, they're just going really hard on me. I just lust. I can keep me up that way. I'm going to root him after this. I'm going to spam purges on their team. I'm going to go back on the hunter now that he lost his pet and uh, his first deterrence. I'm going to try and T-Storm into a bad spot. I did not get it. But hitting the pally or the hunter here should be really good. Just cleaning him. Okay, last to Terrence. Now we're in a really good spot. I'm gonna re him. I'm gonna fire him over to kill the pets. And then I gotta keep the patty alive. Okay, he bubbled. We're good, we're good. Just spam purging the hunter. I will shrink it. Maybe if I'm trapped, all the pally should get me. Nice, quick spell. Good job. And right now, it's basically get away from this warrior. Spam purge. And maybe get a little bit of damage going. He tried to reflect. He's a little too slow. And I'm gonna hit the hunter once he pops back into my line of sight. Not a huge point going on the sword. He's just going to keep reflecting like that. Juked it. And he's storm on to China. Bye. Have a beautiful time. And then go on this hunter. Okay, good timing. The warrior swapping too. I'm going to try and get a... I'm going to do this for haste. I got the hex off it. And he did a nice little shadow meld. So we're on him. We're in a really good spot. He has noted terror. I'm going to trinket that scatter. I'm going to retote him for a warrior fear in case it comes. And then we need to finish him. Full stun on me. Nice. Good to spell by the healer. So I guess we're going to go on Pally for a second. I'm going to do some big damage right here. Warrior is in trouble. Or healer's in trouble, so I'm just spam healing him. Hope he saves on my loss. He's losting me. That is not good. And it's dead. Okay, I'm going to first show you guys the best gear setup for Season 5. And then I will go into the gems, enchants, and general gearing through the rest of Wrath after this. So what's consistent through all of Wrath is you'll be doing two set, two set as elemental. So you can either prioritize mana regen or you can go with crit. So the crit gear is the male and the MP5 gear is ring mail. So if I wanted to have a longer game, because that's what my comp typically goes, then I would be doing the male shoulders and male gloves. And then I'd be prioritizing MP5 on the legs and chest. And then for the fifth piece, we'll be doing the Titan Forged Helmet. It says of Salvation. Usually Salvation is MP5 in Wrath. However, this actually has haste on it. It's 13 item levels less than your Deadly Gear, but it's statted perfectly, so it is well worth the lower item level. And we're gonna get the necklace from Maligos 25. This one is perfectly statted basically as we want the hit and haste is always bis. However, the PVP one's usually really good as it's a 213 with haste resil. So it's perfectly statted. If you don't want to raid, you can do this and find your hit elsewhere. And for cape, we're just going to be doing the haste resil. And for bracers, we'll be doing these PVE ones, which are haste and P5. You can do the PVP honor ones if you want. However, they're going to be either crit resil or MP5 resil, which is not as good statting, but up to you what you want. And then for gloves, we'll be just doing the deadly 
Belt will be Waste Guard of Salvation. This is just MP5. If you have shorter games, swap it out with the crit one. Legs are going to be the Ringmail. Boots will be Titan Forged as well. Once again, it says Salvation, but it is Haste Resil. Your other option is the Resil MP5 or Resil Crit Boots with Honor, which are higher eye level, but once again, no haste. And then we'll be doing the Honor Ring. We really need to get hit as it's hard to get the stat weights we want at the beginning of Wrath. Very easy to get that. And then this ring is from Next Ramus, I believe. It could be from Ascene Sanctum, but this ring is just perfectly statted. Haste, Spellpower, MP5. And then you'll be doing your Medallion and then a PvE Trinket. This one is running Flow of Knowledge, which is Passive Brazil with a proc chance. Very easy to get with Winter's Grass and Marks. And for your weapons and relic, we'll be doing the Kel'Thuzad weapon. Pretty much every spec and class wants their weapon off of KT. He just drops 226s, which you can't really get in the first phase elsewhere. And in the shield, you can run the PvP one. However, the Voice of Reason, which drops off of next or Kel'Thuzad, is better. And then I believe there's another shield called, I think, Shield of Assimilation. It's also 213, but I think it did have haste on it. So that one would be ideal. And for your relic, you have two options, essentially. You can do the badge one, which I believe this is. And this gives you a nice haste proc when you're lightning bolting. But if you're not able to consistently turret lightning bolts, then you probably want to go with this other option, which is this really low eye level blue, which just gives you a lot of damage on your lava burst. And that will be your gearing for the first season of Wrath S5. Then this gearing setup is tailored towards a drain eye. So it's 3.01% hit. Hit cap in PvP for casters is 4%. You get the extra 1% by being a drain eye to your whole party. So it's pretty much exactly your hit cap. So if you're not playing a drainy shaman, then you'll have to find that 1% elsewhere and you can do that just through gymming or you could just swap out a simple piece like swap out the haste resil cape for the hit resil cape as that will give you 1.16% hit, which will put you pretty much at 4.17. So almost exactly the hit cap there as well. For your gearing as an Ellie shaman, you have a lot of options and the main one I will show you first is the high resil build. As you can see, I'm doing a very high result setup at the end of Wrath. I have the soft cap with the second clause, and you need this kind of thing with Shaman typically as you are the kill target and you don't have strong defensive cooldowns like a shield wall or a bubble or an ice block or something along those lines. So what's true throughout all of Wrath, you, for your five set bonus pieces, you'll typically be doing a two set, two set. So right now I'm doing resto gloves and legs. So those are statted Resil MP5. That way you get the 100 Resil bonus. And then I am doing helmet and chest for the Ellie pieces, which are Resil Crit, Resil Crit, and you get 100 Resil with those. And for the fifth piece, you can do the Winter's Grass shoulders, which are Biss, in my opinion, at the end of Wrath. Easy to get. They have a low item level, however, only 251 versus, like you can see, 277, 277, 284, 270. However, they're statted perfectly. Haste, Resil is just what you're trying to get. And going for Crit doesn't matter as much. So these are easy to get and they're pretty much the best thing you could do. Then you go with the haste PVP on or neck as well as the cape. I wouldn't even bother with the PVE ones really ever as these are statted perfectly as well and super easy to get. Then we will be doing the crit bracers. You can also do the MP5 depending on what setup you're running. If you have long games typically obviously go with the MP5 and that applies to the belt and boots as well. They all have the crit or MP5 options. And then you will be getting PVE rings as the PV ones typically aren't as good as they're usually like crit resil or hit resil. And if you're playing Draini, which a lot of people will be, you get that 1% hit with your heroic presence talent or racial. So you will probably want to have the PV rings as you can get like haste MP5 or haste hit or something like that. And then for the trinkets, you'll just run a medallion, whether you're Horde Alliance. And then you will either do some sort of damage trinket like a CTS or you could run a bobble if you want to play a little more defensive and you want some mp5 even something like a solace from toc isn't too bad or like a dfo or even a phylactery so you have options but this one's definitely the best by far and then for weapons you will be doing this relic this one just gives you a lot of haste you just flame shock people you try to sneak them in on like pets and other things at the beginning of the game so you can have five stacks really early and then we just have a lich king weapon this could easily be swapped out for the PvP one. It's statted better. You don't really care about crit. However, this has such a high eye level and it's a private server, so this was available to me, so I got it. But on live, I will be running just the PvP one. And then you just run PvP shield. And that is your high resil setup. And then this is kind of a still high resil setup, but getting a lot more haste. If you see the difference, we're going from 
1567 Brazil to about 1300. And then our haste is changing from about 18% down to almost 26%. So we get a lot more haste. And then when we have our relic going, we'll have even more as well as our Wrath of the Air Tome, which gives us another 5%. So we're at our GCD cap with this setup. And the main difference with this one compared to the Razil, you will use PVE bracers. You can use these from Ruby Sanctum or the cloth ones. Not a huge difference. This just has more armor, but less haste. And then you'll run the belt from Ruby Sanctum as well. And then the boots from Lich or ICC 25. These are just haste crit, high stats. And that is the main difference there. Just those three pieces. And then if you want to have a lot of damage, then you could throw on PVE shield. So you get seven more eye levels there. You're trading some Brazil for haste, but you also get a socket, which is nice. And then I can also throw on these PVE shoulders, which just have way higher stat weights, but losing a lot of Brazil in the process. And those are the main differences for your gearing at the end. All right, and then for jimming and enchanting, it's pretty consistent throughout all of Wrath. For your helmet, you'll be doing the spell power Brazil enchant as well as the shoulders. This is from Winter's Grass, and you can get it at the beginning of the game, and it'll be what you use for the entire time. Then you'll be throwing in a crit crit damage meta that is called the chaotic skyflare diamond and then for the orange it'll just be spell power resil but if you want to skip the socket bonus you could just do a flat resil gem in there then we'll throw resil into shoulders and then kate will be doing spell bend you do not want to do the parachute if you're an engineer even though it might be fun you really got to hit that 85 spell pin to be able to purge off a lot of things like mark of the wild and the only thing that really gets annoying is mage armor or a paladin's fire resist aura for your lava burst and flame shock and then for your chest, you will do Brazil, and then you'll be just throwing in orange Brazil and yellow Brazil. I would throw the orange in here because the socket bonus is worth it. Embracers, you just throw spell power on there. And then for your weapon, I'll throw spell power on there. But you could do black magic. I think it's not as good because a lot of shamans gameplay is you have to go when the opportunity presents itself. So that's better just have the consistency with the spell power. And for your shield enchant, you'll always get Brazil. It is a BC enchant, but it's still the best. And then nothing for trinkets and then rings you just throw in your brazil gym and then for blue sockets you'll be either doing the 25 spell pin or you'll be doing the 10 haste 13 spell pin you can go for the higher spell cap for the 130 which will cover your fire resist aura but i'm just going for the 86 getting a little higher haste because most of the time i'm purging off mark the wild and it doesn't matter too often but if you hate things getting resisted then i would go for the 135 cap and it's 135 for the gems typically, but the actual cap is 130. And then for boot enchant, you have to get run speed. Even if you're an engineer, don't get the rocket boots. The 8% movement is too important. And for your legs, you can do a spellbind gem in here as well as a spell power resil gem if you want to get that socket bonus. But I'm just going for the flat resil. And then I'm making up for it here with a flat 25 spell pin. And then a resil in the belt buckle. Oh, and also you'll be getting the Brazil leg enchant. And then for gloves, you just throw in your spell pen haste or just your flat spell pen. And then you get your beautiful rocket gloves, which are amazing on Ellie. I'll show you a shaman utility build very quickly as I go more in depth in a different video, which I will link in the description below. So with this build, you'll be doing five points into damage. You can flex it with the convection. This is just more mana. So you're playing like some comp that tends to go longer then you can swap it. And it'll do three points in here, just flat Brazil. Then this one, basically the first bit doesn't matter. It's just 6% more Lava Burst damage. We're gonna do five points and a Reverberation. And this is one of the talents you can swap out for some other things. But the main thing that makes this good is the five second cooldown on Wind Shear with this, as you can constantly be kicking people and that's very powerful. This one's just for mana. Five points in here, doubles your crit damage. Then you get Eye of the Storm. This one will give you pushback reduction. And then you tend to play with a Holy Pally. So then with his Concentration Aura, you will have zero pushback even when they're training you. Then you have this one, which is Mana Regen. Very important. If you don't have this, games do tend to go poorly if you can't get a drink somehow. Then you have Call of Thunder, just crit chance. And then more range. This is very nice as your Flame Shot gets up to like a 45 yard range. So you get people way farther away than they think. And then you get this one, which is just shorter cast time. And then you get your Elemental Mastery. This is basically like a Nature Swiftness and Wrath. This one will make your Chain Lightning Lava Burst or Lightning Bolt instant. And then you get 15% spell haste for 15 seconds. So it's just very nice, your big burst move. You have Storm Earth and Fire, which is the cooldown of Chain Lightning, doesn't really matter. But the main thing is it gives your Earth Bind a 100% chance to root targets for five seconds. And then you'll also be doing 
Elemental Oath, which gives a lot of damage and crit to your allies. I mean, shamans just are so nice. They give so many buffs to their buddies. You have Lightning Overload, a big burst move. You don't really have control over, but one in three proc chance, very nice. So if you're turreting, you can turret really hard. And then this one's just reduce cooldown. Then Astral Ship, this is really your only sort of defensive you have. I mean, you have 6% damage reduction here. And then with Astral Ship, if you gain stunned or silence, then you get a flat 30%. And if you're running a high resil setup, then that will help you out. The Totem of Wrath, just big damage for you and your buddies. Lava Flows, this is your dispel protection. A lot of people will be dispelling Flame Shock if they're decent. And sometimes they can backfire if you're not ever Lava Bursting. You see them constantly dispelling, so then you can Flame Shock and then just go right into either purging or doing your Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning, which can really punish them hard if they think they're preventing your Lava Burst. The Shamanism, just flat damage, and then T-Storm. This move is super fun and amazing. If your game's going really long, then you'll want to just be hitting it on cooldown to get your mana back. And then for enhancement, you'll do two points in here. This just gives you some radius on Earthbind and reduce the cooldown of that and your Stone Claw. Ancestral Knowledge, 6% more Intellect, which also pairs with the Unrelenting Storm, so that way you get even more mana back. Then you have to get this one. This makes your Ghost Wolf instant. Without that, you're not going to be able to kite people. And then one point in here for Spell Crit. And then two points in here. The stone skin doesn't matter. It's just to get two seconds shorter on your grounding totem. You can swap this out and throw it in here if you want 2% more crit. And then shaman take focus. This will save you a lot of mana. And that is it for your talents. For your shaman glyphs, you have a few options. For your miners, you have to get the ghost wolf. This one will just give you passive health regen. And then you have to get the water shield. This is just less globals on your water shield. And then here I just get the improved onk. You can get something on water walking or water breathing but keep in mind they are not dispelled on wrath so if you're thinking oh i have a free regent for dispel protection you don't it's just clutter and then for your majors i'm getting glyph of lava now this one you can swap out for the glyph of totem of wrath basically totem of wrath will give you flat damage on a undispellable buff but the lava burst one just focuses more of that spell power into that ability so it depends on what comp you're playing if you are in some comp where you can constantly be turreting people then the Totem of Wrath one ends up being a little bit better. But if you're playing something like Thundercleave or some comp where you're trained all the time, then you definitely want to have Lava because you're not going to be turreting much. And then you have to get Glyph of Stone Cloud Totem. This is just a huge shield you get. When you pop it, you will get a undispellable 15 second buff. And it doesn't matter if they try to kill your Totem as it has a bit of HP anyway. And for the last Glyph, Glyph of Thunder makes your Thunderstorm go from 45 seconds to 35. This basically reads more mana regen as you get 8% mana back when you T-Storm. So with this, you can knock people off on Blade's Edge or Sewers more often. And then you also get more mana back. And it can hit somewhat hard. Like, I've killed people with Thunderstorm a lot of times. It can help finish them off if you don't want to cast. So those are the main Glyphs. I really think it's just those four. There are some other ones you could possibly run, but... Like Glyph of Shocking, that one reduces the global on your shocks, but I have so much haste already, I really don't think it's that valuable. So those are the glyphs. For professions, I think it is pretty clear cut what you should be going with. Dual crafting is definitely the best one as it'll give you the most flexibility as well as the highest stat weights. So for instance, with my gearing, at the end of Wrath, you can just do three 34 Resil Gems. So you get 34 in the chest, 34 in the ring, and then 34 in the belt. But if it's early Wrath where you don't have access to these 25 Spellpin Gems, because only the blue gems are available, I believe it's 20 for the blue, you can maybe fix your Spellpin issue by making one of the, I believe it's 43 Spellpin for the Stormy Dragon's Eye. And that way you can get your either 85 or your 130 Spellcat, whichever one you're going for. And then for your second profession, engineering is definitely the best. These rocket gloves, that's all you need. You can do this every 45 seconds. It helps you get your burst with your lava burst or your chain lightning, whatever. And you can use it while silenced. So if someone's really low and they're kind of peeling you, you can still use this while you're silenced or kicked or something. So very nice. And it'll also keep people in combat if you somehow can stop like a drink or a res, which is rare, but that is another reason you use it. If you're like running over and you're silenced, because they're trying to prevent you from stopping them. And then the third option is blacksmithing. This gets better later when the gems get stronger. If you just want flat stat weights, then you could get the extra socket, which will appear on your gloves as well as your bracers. And you'll just throw in either Resil in here, or spell pen, or whatever it is you're going for at the time. Maybe you're doing some BG hero setup, you just throw in some spell power gems. And then some distant ones is herbalism is okay. Uh, you can use the heal occasionally, but I don't think it's really worth it. And then tailoring would be nice to have that spell power proc, but then you lose out on the really important 35 spell pen enchant. So there is that. You still could make tailoring work if you wanted, but you'd really have to shore up 
the gems with just the flat 25s to make up for missing the cape one. And then the rest of them aren't as good because you don't really want spell power, especially like crit chance on skinning or whatever. I would definitely try to stay with one of those top three professions if you want to min max. Then what about the totem bar? So this was added in Wrath and essentially you have three different calls and the mana cost of them is directly related to what totems are in the bar. So it's just the addition of these four totems for this. And then in this call of the answers one, I only have two totems. So I'll show you what I do for each of them. This is the main one I'm using most of the time. It's a Tremor, Totem of Wrath, Cleansing, and Wrath of Air. You pop it at the beginning of the game. And then if you reposition near them, you pop it again. Costs a lot of mana, but this will get down your Cleansing, which helps against Hunters, DKs, Shadow Priests, Rogues. So you'll be able to get off Wound Poison, Serpent Stings, Devouring Plague, maybe some DK Diseases. So you really want to have that down. You also have your Mana Spring, which is very strong, and you need that Mana Regen typically. However... The repercussions of not having your cleansing totem down is brutal. And then for your earth totems, really you're only doing stone claw on demand. You're never going to pop that with your bar. And the same is true with earthbind. So the only thing you have is strength of earth. So if you're running with a melee, like a warrior, you possibly could be doing this over trimmer if they don't have the ability to fear, or maybe you're against a warrior team and they already blew their only fear. So then you could just be popping this for your ally and not worry about trimmer. Then the other one I use a lot is the Call of the Spirits doesn't matter which one you're using, I just set it up this way. And then the only difference is I swap out the Cleansing Totem with the Mana Spring. And if I was playing with a Warrior, then maybe I would swap this with Strength of Earth. For the last Totem Bar, I tend to just put Stone Claw and Grounding Totem down. So if I'm under a lot of pressure from Wizards or a Wizard in a melee or just one Wizard, then I would hit this and instead of going Stone Claw and then Grounding Totem, It'll just do them both at the same time, saving you a global so you can go Wolf or Purge or whatever it may be sooner. And then for your enchant, you'll be running the Flame Tongue weapon as this one will give you more spell power. And then if you do end up talenting differently and enhance, you can get this elemental weapon talent, which will give you even more spell power on it. And that's just passive, which is nice. And then you'll be having water shield on pretty much the whole time. So those are the only two buffs you have as well as your totems. You can use lightning shield in some situations is what 98% of the time Water shield's gonna be the best. Macros, luckily shamans don't need that much. I would highly advise you do arena one, two, three macros, and you can check that out in my other video if you don't know what those are. I will also put them in the comment section below so that way you can just copy pasta. And I would use that for your frost shock macro. So basically if I hit frost shock, it'll do my target, whoever I'm targeting at the time. Otherwise shift five, control five, alt five, that will do the arena one, two, three, four, regardless of whether I'm targeting them or not. So very useful, especially for your wind shear. You have to be able to hit this very quickly in reaction to somebody casting an important spell like a polymorph, a heal, maybe they're about to kill a teammate and you can stop like a lava burst or something. So if you only do like one of them, then definitely do it on the wind shear. That is just so key to doing well. So you have it on your frost shock, you have it on your purge, you have it on your wind shear, your hex, and then you have your party one, two, three macros. That'll be on your healing wave, which you don't really use much as Ellie. But you could use it if you're timing, like someone's in a cyclone and it's going to come out so you can time a bigger heal with a healing wave. Well, most of the time you're going to be doing your lesser healing wave. And then I have it on Bobble of True Blood. If you're playing an early Wrath, you might get the trinket off here, uh, 25 Maligos. I think it's called like Ice Crystal or something, but that's on a one minute cooldown. Basically a weaker Bobble, but same concept. And then I just have a Gift of the Naru Party 1, 2, 3. This is only if you're a Drainy. And the last one is this Ghost Wolf macro. It's a simple one, just add an exclamation to the beginning. This will make it so if you're spamming your Ghost Wolf, it won't take you out of form, which is very nice. Versus if you don't have the macro, then if I'm just mashing it, then it's taking me in and out. And this can cost you mana. And of course, you're not even in the Ghost Wolf. So that's it. That's really all Shamans need. They don't have a ton of macros. And even between Enhance and Resto, this is really all you need other than like a Nature Swiftness macro for resto i'm gonna be hitting tremors occasionally if i can unless the pressure's too high that way the priest can maybe get some fears off the melee i'm gonna flame shock them as soon as they come in and i'm gonna go right into purging which is really not much to purge actually and shields on sky hitting dk really hard by the way trying to get huge damage i'm gonna just go for a all right i got wrecked 